Hey guys, as usual, this is available for free to download in my 3D Artist Coloring Book. I've just added this one as a new page. So if you wanna practice your texturing and you don't worry about baking or creating the Substance Painter file, I've done it for you. So check it out in the link below. So first things first, I wanna tackle one piece at a time. So I tackled the plastic handle. Now I used my stylized smart material, my stylized plastic smart material and it's available on my Patreon for all my Patreon users, if you want to check that out. So there was a bit of an issue here and I kind of learned my lesson with it. The actual pan itself is divided into three parts the base, the curved walls, and then the actual top itself. So what I should have done is I should have done all three at the same time and then copy and paste the settings into each one. Instead, I sort of textured one each at a time. And that way, unfortunately, you could see the seams and it wasn't lining up properly. Like right here, you can see it doesn't match. So I was like, okay, well, let's just start from scratch. So I ended up basically starting from starting from scratch on this one. Now the egg texturing was actually my favorite part. Um, so to start off with the base color, I just gave it an off white, a bit of a yellowy white. And then I wanted to make sure that I got the burnt crispiness around the outside. So all I did is I created a mask generator and just used purely the curvature map to pull the color out onto the edges. And then I just kind of messed around with this, the sharpness, fine, soft settings until I got the look that I wanted. Now to make sure that the lines weren't super uniform, I used a blur slope in the actual mask itself. So what you can see that I'm doing is it's actually kind of blending and warping the color a little bit, which makes it look a little better instead of having just straight lines following the curvature. Now at first I decided on making multiple layers of masks. I wanted to do a bit of a orangey around the outside and then pull it in with the dark around the edges. But at the end of the day, I kind of decided it didn't look great. Now also I messed around with some roughness values as well. I wanted to give the egg a bit of a greasy feel and I never really found a, um, I never really f could find one that I was really happy with. So I ended up just, just leaving it. Um, but that's the really cool thing about art especially when you're working on something you're just doing for a fun project. It's okay to drop things every once in a while. You'll see in this video, I experiment and test a lot of things that eventually I, I learn that they won't work. And it's a really great lesson for them. So the next thing was the face itself. With the roughness, I wanted to have a bit of a glossy feel. So I made the, I, I, I balanced the roughness into a nice little spot where it wasn't too high and it wasn't too low, but still in my renders, you could see the sheen or the, or the, the glistening of the object itself. For a bit of color variation, I also added a mask that went off of the curvature and just baked in some nice little orange tones around the eyes, around the, the bottom as well. Just give it, it's, 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 with, with stylized art, it's it's always really great to have some color variation in there to keep things interesting. It's tough to balance simplicity and complexity, but color variation is one of the important ones that you shouldn't skip on. And I was feeling super lazy here, so I was just looking for an alpha stamp that was a pure circle. And I never found one because I'm stupid and I should have known there's none there. So what I eventually end up doing is just hopping in and 
and um, using the polygons itself and just simply drawing the, yeah, there you go, drawing the black around the eyes. Here I'm testing the resolution. I was curious to see how clean it would look if I went up to 4K, but it ended up being a very, very neg negligible difference, so it didn't matter. Now messing with the metal on the handle here, I originally had this marbly look, but it didn't just look right. Um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up just dragging and dropping my stylized smart material that I've custom made in there, and it honestly worked pretty much perfectly. And now that I've got all the colors and the basic idea of what I want the texture to look like baked in, this is where I start messing with the final details. You can see that I'm changing the roughness values of all the big faces, and a little earlier I was messing with the mask as well. Now this is something important here you want to see as well. You notice how the color changed? That's because I changed the lighting scene. I changed it to more of a white panoramic. Um, which is super important and I would always recommend switching to this light value because since it's using white tones, this is what it's going to look like in almost every software that you move it into. If you're using something like, um, like a garden or um, some other colored HDRI, everything's going to look wrong. Again, I really, really wanted some grease spots to work with this model, but I just couldn't find the right map to make this work. Um, the thing with using these custom grunge maps in Substance Painter is they're not stylized. Um, what you can do is I was half tempted to go into Photoshop and make some of them for myself, but since this is a quick project, I figured let's just leave it blank because sometimes simple is the best. Here's a nice little trick. I mess with the stylized baked filter to offset some of the subtle colors that are poking off in them, that are coming off in the metal. It's a very, very small detail, but it's a nice little addition that takes that extra 90% of the way done to 100%. Now what I'm going to be doing moving forward here is a lighting pass on each of my objects. Now that I've got the colors and everything I like and the, the overall shape and texture of everything, I'm going to start adding that extra color using the baked stylized lighting filter. I'm going to do it on most of the main objects and you're going to see that it takes a very flat image and ends up making the mesh itself really pop and have some really cool color variation. Also to note, it's really good practice just to add a levels filter to each one of your um, layer stacks just so you can test and change the colors and have really great control over it. Even though this was a speed texturing process and I did it as quickly as I could, this was still a great learning process for me because I learned a ton about the kind of mistakes I'm really, really prone to make and how to avoid them in the future. So every video is a lesson, guys, and I really hope that by me seeing or you guys seeing my mistakes that you are going to be learning and growing from them as well. 
Once again, you can grab this model and plenty of others if you want to practice the texturing or if you want to texture along with me. You can grab it on the 3D Artist Coloring Book. Again, I will leave a link in the description. It's on my Gumroad. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are going to make with this. See you later, guys.